there. And then they came out with the first expansion, and everything I had done for the last two years was meaningless. Because they bumped the level cap or something? Yeah. Well, now because do it, it again. <laughs> yes. In the first five minutes of going into the new zone, I would get items that were better than the stuff I had to raid for months to get. <laughs> I was just so angry. Yeah, so soul crushing. Hi, homie, way, everyone. Yeah. What's Let's up? Talk about crunch. We're talking about crunch. <laughs> What's up, JT? What's up, Enigma? I. I'm curious to see, like, is there going to be a new form of, like, therapy for, like, post-MMO depression when these servers just inevitably, I mean, they're cash cows for now, but, like, eventually, time will wear on them and they will have to shut down. And these people that have invested, like, multiple years of playtime, uh, <laughs> probably even more than that, so, like... Uh, how are they going to deal with that? Because none of it's real. Like, yeah, that That's an enormous well, investment to be like, well, I can log on and look at how cool my character is in a world that is dead. I guess they just move on to the next game. It's, it's like people who still play Diablo 2 or something, right? They'll well, just come out with another game. I don't know. There's some like hardcore people that are just like, yeah, like still playing uh uh, EverQuest and stuff like what? Yeah. What happens when that goes away? And those de hot diehards that I don't know, they'll all become RuneScape originals. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, uh, I remember playing that in school. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, that was what a uh, computer club was. It was it was meant to be like oh, uh, learning computers, do, you know, do your computer assignments before school and it instantly turned into runescape club everyone including the teacher <laughs> everyone was just playing runescape <laughs> the teacher oh, i remember getting so much shit from our uh computer department because we put uh unreal tournament yes. Game of the Year edition on the share uh -huh. drive and then someone left it open i remember the day it happened i go you didn't close the folder it was in you idiot you <laughs> alt f4 that crap ah uh. Uh, that was keeping us off drugs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All the other kids were having sex before school and doing drugs and uh, drinking and stuff. That was, I was getting mama monster kills. Oh, that was so fun, though. <laughs> playing Unreal Tournament in the library. I remember that so vividly. So fondly. That's, that's the last time I played Unreal Tournament, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no reason to play it now. I we have a bunch of people. Well, what's it the every day. Up to now? Oh no! Yeah, what in <laughs> the getting, world? It's making shovelware. Mm -hmm. But hey, happy Meta Mondays, everyone! Happy Meta Monday! Oh, here we go. Here's the song. Uh oh, uh oh. It's Meta Monday, Meta Meta Monday, Meta Monday, Monday. Meta Monday, Meta, Meta Monday, with the fellas, Meta Monday, with the guys, Meta Monday, Jason, Corey, Tony, Jim, Meta Monday, Meta Monday, Meta Monday. No, no, sure. <laughs> no MAGA Mondays. No, no more MAGA Mondays. <laughs> oh, God. Get ready for Store One. Uh, our first prompt is by JT. Uh, you are now the cool. Uh, you are you are the Kool Aid Man, a popular drink mascot and recurring character in AIPD. You think it's time you got your own TV show? I'd watch it. You pitch an idea for a live action sitcom about you and Hollywood. Quickly agrees to make it. Great. You shout, "Oh yeah!" You eagerly await to hear what a list actor gets hired to play you in the show. Oh, you're not gonna play yourself? Hmm. Okay. Gabriel a few Iglesias. months passed, <laughs> and you're still yeah. waiting for that big name to be cast as you. Finally, after a year passes, the show is finally greenlit by the network. Sounds like Hollywood to me. Oh, let's think about this. It's in Tom Hanks? No. Charlie Sheen. I think Charlie Sheen. You look at the poster. <laughs> you look at the teaser poster. John Goodman? The show. You think it'll be a big guy? But he's dead. Mm. Oh wait, no he's not. Is he? No he's not. No. But, oh my no, god. No, no. Okay. But he lost all the weight. He's essentially dead. <laughs> oh, he's dead, to, he's dead uh, to you because he lost the weight. Okay. I, I mean, I feel good for him, but he looks 
flabby. Like, There's a lot of extra skin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good good for him. Being healthy is always good, but, uh, you know. Yeah. You get a really thin actor. He's Tape, gotta be... You gotta staple that shit together or something. I don't know. Get that. Get out of that. You got the money for it. I, I gained 300 pounds for this role. Now I can't remember. Uh del toro's like really thin tall actor that he uses for all of his monsters uh, he was oh yeah he was the creepy man yeah yeah <laughs> yeah put him in he he's got i gotta be in the chair at three in the morning what's it's up seven Bash? hours to put on the kool-aid suit <laughs> oh. you finally look at the teaser poster for the show and the Bash. and the person they've chosen to what play did Bash say? You is Lizzo. Lizzo. I'm free, yeah, yeah, sugar free. I don't know who that is. You're not sure what? if it'll turn out to be good DNA enough test or not, and... but you can't wait to see how it turns out. I don't know who Lizzo is. Am I supposed to know who that is? Well, you don't, Chip, do you not former... listen to music at all? Google Lizzo. Not. Not yeah. from this, not from this decade, I guess. <sighs> the newest thing I lift, listen to is Daft Punk. Oh, my God. Around the world, around the world. The show? Oh, it's a woman. The show is going to be okay, good as I hell. See yeah. yeah, I see it. Okay, that's Kool Aid Man right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How progressive oh, to make the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. I do not agree, Misha. Underrated, if anything. Uh, look up Lizzo, yeah. She has many, many good songs. She wears red a lot, so that's good. Hey. Perfect. Perfect for the role. Yeah. No, I've never seen her before in my life, so. Okay. So you thank go you. over the script with Lizzo. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's not too uncommon if a couple people in chat are already. So you're not alone, Jim. I don't know why I'm being overly harsh on you. Jason hates birthdays. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, yeah he does. This is, <laughs> this is classic chat <laughs> manipulation. <laughs> taking my <laughs> hatred of a specific thing that happens on birthdays for here i'll say you go over the script with lizzo you say you have to learn to be kool-aid embrace diabetes ah, uh, i think so i sense i sense some romance between the two of us yeah hey uh if you uh want to get some dinner after the show you both wait eagerly for the pilot to begin the show airs and is a complete failure <laughs> It oh my gets gosh. bad reviews and low ratings. Damn! It's cancelled after one season. Is this the table read? No, apparently it, it didn't even... Well, it got a season. I guess so. they didn't cancel it after <sighs> one episode. I, I mean, yeah, they, at least they've... I mean, how many shows dial at the die right after the pilot? Like, at least we got to produce one season of a show. It sucked, um, but... I'm gonna say you um, you talk to the network CEO for feedback. Okay. Give us one shot, a Christmas special. Yeah. If we can bring it back. <laughs> uh, reviews said it just seemed like a long commercial, a one season long commercial. Uh, they kept trying to sell me Kool Aid. At, how many times did they mention Kool Aid in every episode? But that's the name of the main character. They just it's a didn't normal understand. entertaining. <laughs> it's an entertaining sitcom until Kool Aid Man <laughs> bursts through the wall with every scene, like Kramer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lot, all the budget went on towards walls. They couldn't even paint them. It's just barren walls. Boom! You knew he was gonna burst through the wall. This episode brought to you by our sponsors, Everyday Home Depot. Yeah, <laughs> Home Depot. <laughs> buy boards uh, to bring through. Chips and board. Mm -hmm. You immediately call the head of the network and start begging for another chance. Become a director? I suck your oh, dick. Feedback? They cancel the show? That. You can get feedback, sure. 
So what? Yeah, they canceled the show. We want to know why. Give us at least the closure. Tell us why. Why? Oh, it looks... Yeah, I want to know why. Uh, but first, we got to gain some, uh, some depression weight. How about the CEO <laughs> says, uh, studies show people like fatter characters. Mm. Okay. We are fat. <laughs> but fatter. We need to gain uh -oh. weight for the role. Yeah. Oh my God! We're not playing the role. Lizzo is. No, no, no. We're we're <laughs> if there's a reboot happening, we're taking over. Oh, that was the problem is that we didn't play ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Lizzo took it it's a different like Rocky. direction. You know, Sylvester Stallone. They wanted another actor to play it, and he refused. Oh, interesting. Good it was the right choice. Mm -hmm. When I giant glass pitcher of sweet red fluid invades the suburban town. Things are gonna get juicy. Yeah. You take the advice to heart and begin a regiment of all corn syrup. Yes. <laughs> and gain 100 pounds. Accumulate mass. Super fan Jeff Bezos buys the show and revives it on Amazon. Fuck yeah. <laughs> That's what's gotta happen. You feel warm and fuzzy inside as you believe you've found your true calling. Back. A few years pass, and you finally get a second chance at this show. My 600-pound life. <laughs> yeah, it says a show. <laughs> Not many Biggest people loser. have the uh, the knee strength to take up the mantle of being fat. Fat aid man. Wow. Oh my god, that's great. And it's dangerous because we're made out of glass. We could burst at any time. My calling is to be large. What's up, Hover Squid? Thank you for the kind words, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hmm. thank you very much. Our Twitter friend. Yeah. All right, so what TLC show are we going on right now? <laughs> because that's good. Um, well, what, what are our options? We can oh. either have a bunch of kids or redecorate our house. No, Infinite My got it. Addiction. <laughs> Uh, Infinite just got came up with the perfect name. Uh, you you get an offer from TLC to be on their new show, like Six Hundred Gallon Life. <laughs> oh my god! You accept. What is a gallon? Like nine pounds? Uh, it could be different. It depends on the density. Yeah. Of water, water. The show is Talking a roaring success, going on for six seasons and spawning two spinoffs. Yes! Yeah, look at oh that! Oh my god. Fucking reality! We're, our life is basically ruined. Everyone makes fun of us everywhere we go, but the show is a smashing success. Um, what's the spinoff? Time... <laughs> what? What? Okay, I can't even imagine one spinoff, much less two spinoffs for my six hundred gallon life, my diabetic, a... my diabetic maid's life, and um, uh... <laughs> wife swap. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh... <laughs> Dave the spinoffs. Oh, that's a great... Here, yeah, let's get that. Uh, you are surprised to the spinoff shows are listed as... Fluid swaps are Cinemax spinoff. Please come on. Generate, generate. Oh! One. My 700 to 690 gallon life. Oh, we gained some weight. To my other <laughs> life, it's a secret. Oh. You're on today's oh. show, Ellen, and The View. Wow, okay, we're doing the circuit. Ellen. <laughs> so we gained 100 pounds, but we were constantly rubber banded between 690 and 700. Oh, uh, yeah. So we had to specify in the, wha the most wackadoo way. My other life, it's a secret. What's the secret? Yeah, what is the secret? My 600 gallon Beyonce. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> yeah, why is it seven seven hundred to six ninety? Yeah, it's not how you do ranges, show. I'm sure there's a reason. Thirty outs, we not say. <laughs> Wow, the oh, view. Oh, Hover's got it. It's to account for random spillage, yeah. Because he's always busting through walls and refilling. So, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. And every time he busts through a wall, you know, a couple gallons fly out of there. <laughs> oh, or that, yeah. The show is about him losing 10 gallons, and he just can't do it. It's, just, it's the easiest fucking thing, especially for bigger people. Just stop drinking pop or something, and you can lose, like, 50 pounds. Yeah. We just, yeah. we just can't stop. <laughs> we just can't. Even the most minor of goals, we just can't. We're on my strange addiction. I can't stop drinking corn syrup. <laughs> who, who's buying it for you? You, you literally are bedridden. How are you getting all this corn syrup? Amazon. Uh, a helicopter drops it into a tube. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why is that allowed? How about you go on to Ellen and make an embarrassing admission on, yes. on the air? Yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Big reveal. Oh, and, and yeah, we reveal the secret of the other show. What, what's, what's our secret? And we dance. You become the most famous person to be <gasps> on the show and a role model for people with secret lives as Slim Jims. Now that I do <laughs> not believe. <laughs> what? Our secret life? We're skinny? No, I think we use a series of uh, <laughs> of uh, carnival mirrors to trick the audience into thinking we are Slim Jims. <laughs> Look how wow. thin and beautiful I am. Slam, yeah. crash, <laughs> step. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your revelation causes Slim Jim stocks to... Uh, uh, what's the opposite of skyrocket? To crash? Plummet. Crash. To plummet. Try a new, try our new brand of Slim Jim, Big Jims. The <laughs> six pound Big Jim. Oh, they're not slim anymore, they're round. Mm -hmm. Jims withdraw from store shelves in the U.S. and people don't feel comfortable buying a product from a company that makes fun of people with a normal weight. A what? Within two years, the entire company goes bankrupt. Okay. Look at all you making, healthy losers. Making fun of normality. Yeah. Be cool. Be fat. Eat Slim Jims. Yeah, why can't they just be called Jims? Why? They gotta be Slim Jims. Alright, we'll make them fat Jims. No, well, how about the normal people? Wait. Normal Jims. Wow. You rebrand you re Slim Jims. Didn't realize it's a weight loss food. Yeah, I didn't realize we were here like a majority stakeholder in the company. Well, I guess if huh. if the mess, I mean, it's like Jared, right? <laughs> when you do some wackadoo shit, you're gonna cause some damage for your uh, your parent company. Oh yeah, the product is a success, but the incident cost Jim and his company so much that it goes out of business. Oh, it cannot survive to normal. Yes. You never gain weight ever again. Now that's the biggest surprise of the story. You never gain weight again? Is it saying we're dead? Ever. <laughs> Is it? Uh, yeah, you die <laughs> yeah. from Slim Jim and Kool-Aid. Yeah, you constantly lose the weight as you rot into the ground. I'm going to say you, uh, late one night, you call Lizzo on the phone uh, and are too embarrassed to say anything. Okay, yeah, I like that. We're just heavy breathing <laughs> into call. the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Kool Aid Man, is that you? I know this is you. I have your number saved. I can see a <laughs> color ID. <laughs> now he can't do 690 to 700. Yeah. He could never do the spin off to the spin off. So fat, your name doesn't even fit on caller ID. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't make any sense because her name's six letters long. Should <laughs> you at a Denny's where you order three breakfast platters? Oh. 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 Okay. 
We're maintaining our weight yeah. with three breakfast flavor. Not going for a four. Wow, I'm proud of you, Kool-Aid <laughs> man. Thanks, Lizzo. I'll, I'll have the Babe Ruth. Uh, sorry, what's that? That's three Grand Slam breakfasts. <sighs> you profess your love for Lizzo. And apologize. She's probably, she's probably moved on. You profess your love for Lizzo and these pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> and apologize no, no. about the the show. It was going to be smart. Uh, it was going to be like Frazier. I could not put your in a sentence for... She states you don't need to apologize. She goes on to say that she's glad that you let someone else make fun of you. People were making fun of me? Oh, God. What? <laughs> Four more breakfasts. Uh, All right, let's get the moral. Hey, everybody. What's the moral of the story? Hey, that's gonna tell us. Didn't need to apologize to Lizzo. Everyone has a secret life as a fat guy. <laughs> You should try it sometime. I mean, for me, that's that's completely true all the time, but I don't know if everybody. Wow. <laughs> Quite the moral. I tell <laughs> myself, just, just have a donut. Just have ice cream. Don't put one on the other. Yeah. And every time I fail. <laughs> it's just, it's too good of a combination. Uh, all right, moving on to story two. You might find yourself reading story two and ask yourself, how did I get here? I was last in my bed. Why am I waking up in the story? <laughs> uh, this prompt is by Misha. Hey, hey, Misha. Uh, you are Jason, a guy who's part of a uh, BC Boys cover band called The Beardy Boys with your bearded AIPD co-stars, Corey and Tony. Jim is angry he can't join The Beardy Boys because he doesn't show the lower part of his face and no one knows <laughs> if he has a beard or not. Yeah, correct. You know, he's yeah, like true, Wilson. He's just always standing behind a fence. <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What is this? The rest of you. What? All right. needs another neck. Yeah, it was. Are you sure about this? I mean, we all know it's just going to be for show. You don't really want us around, do you? What? Is that like me and Tony talking to you, Jason? I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's called the Beardy Boys. I don't care if, if he doesn't have a beard, he can't go on stage. And he can't be mysterious about it. He's got to show the beard or nothing at all. I just glue one on. <laughs> yeah. You just have a fence in front of your face with the beard on the fence. Well, I mean, you guys, anyone who has a beard isn't showing the lower half of their face. Mm. So good. who's wearing the mask? Hmm? Good rebuttal. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh. I do use it to hide my several chins. Yeah, same. <laughs> you've, just, you've just blown our Stop art. hiding. <laughs> yeah, how about you say, I need you guys. Without you, I'm just the bearded boy. Yeah. <laughs> now let's get ready for our, <laughs> for our show. You all go to take the stage. Just as Dreddy Van Halen, oh shit, lead singer of a Van Halen cover band. Oh, that's a reggae. That, yeah, that would be a great name for a reggae Van Halen cover band. Like, have you ever listened to the uh, Easy All Stars? Oh yeah, I love those guys. Oh, they're so I great. Love, uh, I love their their money cover where it's like bong noises. <laughs> yeah, I'm... instead of instead of cash registers. It's I've never heard good. Oh, I'll send, I'll post a link oh, no. in the Discord. It's oh. really good. They did a cover of the whole Dark Side of the Moon album. You. Yes, it's great. He lights a Ooh. cigarette as he says this and goes to hit you with it. He's gonna hit us with a lit cigarette? What an asshole! Dude, that hurt. And, and a freshly lit one. It's not like he, he was currently smoking it. He's lighting it just to throw it at us. 
Thanks. Damn it, Dreddy. Minus you one HP. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you say nice try, but I had a horrible father and pull up your sleeve and show all the cigarette burns you already had. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Good luck. Find a, <laughs> find a fresh spot to burn. It's going to be a chore for you. And he goes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this one's all callous. <laughs> yeah. It is all scar. These are not acne scars. Yeah. Dreddy is hit, man. Possibly he hit us, man. Hit us with the cigarette. I feel like Dreddy could be in the, the Beardy Boys. He seems cool. Hmm. Really? I think so. It's a good name. You show Dreddy your cigarette burn calloused arm and say, try to hurt me. Please. Try to hurt me. I can't feel anymore. <laughs> I can't feel anymore. <laughs> oh. I didn't put that part in. As you punch him, he falls to the floor with blood coming from his nose. He says, I can't go on stage like this. As he starts to check his nose and... Makeup! Makeup! <laughs> Come cover up this bloody nose. I gotta perform a song. <laughs> We're the beardy bad boys now. Yeah. Uh. You shove him to the ground. Mm hmm. And take the stage to perform your hit cover of. Uh, what's a good Beastie Boys? Fight for your right. Fight for your right to party. Fight to beardy or something. For <laughs> your right to shake, <laughs> to trim your beard. <laughs> no sheep in Brooklyn. Was it worth it? I, I don't know. Was it? What? Feels pretty good that we shoved him to the ground and ended the set early and just took over his instruments. Is that a fourth wall break? Are you talking to us, Emily? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yes. Isn't it your stage? Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like he he was opening for us and <laughs> right in the middle of a set for some reason he was backstage or maybe I don't know. Intergalactic would be really good, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say suddenly you were hit in the head with a guitar. Oh! Not in the middle of a performance. That's the unwritten rule of banding. Is it dready? <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. You broke my fucking nose, crunch. I can't sing anymore. I hope this doesn't kill us. <laughs> well, Jim, I don't know. <laughs> you are hit so hard you fall into the drum kit as the rest of the band tries to pelt him off with drumsticks. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> my head. Fuck my head. <laughs> something, my about head. <laughs> something about Oprah saying that just made it. <sighs> you have a full band on band. Brawl in the middle of the show. The crowd Hell yeah. is loving it. They're like too busy moshing to even notice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate your restraint in not calling it a battle of the bands. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh... The lead singer they comes back it. to the stage and picks up your bass. Fucking ass. <laughs> Looks like you didn't know who you were messing with. Yeah, mm. I didn't think you'd be so unprofessional that you'd ruin the show and fight me in the middle of my performance. BC boys have a lot more instruments than I thought. <laughs> yeah. All these, like... <laughs> drumsticks, drum set. <laughs> yeah, a seemingly arsenal of drumsticks. 
Oh, okay. Well, can, we, can we challenge him to something? Uh, Raindrop, sponsoring the show, just delivered a real-life <laughs> giant-sized robot for Intergalactic. Ah. Uh, Guess who's using that to stop these mothers? Uh, Raindrop, sponsoring the show, just delivered a life-sized uh, robot for Intergalactic. You hop in the robot and use it to crush... Uh, what's his name's band? Dready. Dread Halen. I'll be the now? legs. Yeah, we all Voltron. Because this is not the intended purpose. Oh. And now for a special request. Uh huh. He says. Oh, what? Does he have something? Hmm. What would a what would a Van Halen band fight a giant robot with? Uh, anima. <laughs> um, uh, you try to smush him, but then he jumps out of the way. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Looks like go I jump. 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 Yeah, the crowd is all a giant sexy teacher. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He jumps, but he jumps like 30 <laughs> feet into the air. We're just like, Jesus. That's all I can do is jump. Jump. I, I have to jump on stage every time we say jump during the song. My knees <laughs> are incredible. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got to ice him. Play the birthday song. Hey, get that guy out of here. Security. Unfortunately, you missed. What? He knocks your legs away and the two of you have a back and forth fight. It ends when you drop ready on the crowd. <laughs> we just overhand spike him with the mech and we just <laughs> splatter him into the crowd. They go, oh, Jesus Christ! That was a bit of an overreaction. A few of the people in the crowd are like, yeah, crowd surf, and they just get smushed. <laughs> yeah, the... They're like holding their hands up and he goes right next to him and explodes in the guts. And they're just like covered. They're like ah, ah, ah. <laughs> 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 I thought this was the Beastie Boys, not Guar. I've never been to a Guar show. Didn't I, Ed, uh, yeah, Eddie passed away recently. I mean, like the past couple of months, I think, right? I was living with my brother when he went to a Guar concert. He purposely went there in a white t-shirt and came back just absolutely red, covered in fake blood. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah, that's right. I've seen videos. It's like just, yeah, just hoses of blood all over the place. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow, is he dead? You think he's dead? Uh, I I think totally. I think we obliterated him. I gonna, I feel like I'm gonna say the um I want to say that the mosh pit consumes him. <laughs> okay, I feel like I feel like if you saw that, even no matter how much you liked uh the Beardy Boys, <laughs> well, however <laughs> much you could like them, I feel like seeing that you would instantly turn on whoever. Nobody can just pick up the lead singer of another band and spike them into the crowd, killing them instantly, and be liked. And his destroyed bass as the crowd goes wild. Oh. oh don't need I guitar. think they just dig him. <laughs> he oh, said, what? He, oh. I don't care. I'm done with him anyway. Uh, who, Wait, who said that? Probably, <laughs> probably Corey or Tony. Oh, yeah. That sounds like a Tony line. Eh, I don't oh, care. Shit. I'm done with them anyway. Yeah. You take a, a bow in your giant robot as the MC says, the brawl of the bands is over. Yeah. I can't believe they ate up too. I, yeah, we... I don't... I'm not even going to begin to try to understand what our fans like. 
But for some reason, they like us, so they good, good old bunch of cannibals, yeah. The winner <laughs> is the beauty boys. Mm -hmm. A crowd surfer dances on your banner. Oh. But who won the fight? Shut up, he crowd asks. surfer. You look at the two of them and realize you can't tell a lie. We got Pretty sure it was up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We did. It's obvious. Oh, here we go. Infinite's got the beard touch, which is less of an item and more of an infectious disease, which causes anyone you touch to start rapidly going hair all over their body until they choke to death on their own massive hair. All over their body? That's not a beard. That's just gross. Uh, Most Wookiees suffer from this illness. <laughs> uh, killing Dreddy. Uh, filled you. Uh, killing Dreddy gave you the beard touch. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> and Dreddy, too. Uh, you t you test out your power by touching the crowd surfer. A woman. Yeah. He begins to get hair all over his face until he's nothing but a screaming ball of rage. The bear oh. dies one. Ha! Oh, okay. The bear dies. The bear dies. <laughs> Wait, they call it a bear? Yeah, the bear dies run. Uh, what happens when a bear eats a bunch of poison? The bear dies. Come on, Oprah, that's the clearly Beatties. Yeah, why would you pronounce a bear dies? The entire club is quarantined. Night of the bearded dead. Oh yeah, now this is kind of turning into a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> and the hairy ones are wrangled. Yeah. Can confirm that having a beard gives you rage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so testosterone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just. The last time you remember having what? mass hair growth on a large scale was what? when the Black Hook first visited. What? What the hell uh, is that? The, the Black Hook? Is that a pirate? Yeah, the Black Hook is our manager or something. Our a pirate manager. The Black Hook. Uh, uh, pirate captain. And the manager of your band. <laughs> Finally shows up in the tour bus to pick you up and seize all the chaos get on board yar we're going to the next town what the hell happened here did i miss something you mm -hmm. explain everything and when you're finished he laughs i knew you were a liar he says pointing to his clean chin Whoa! I, I know what to do. You Black touch his chin. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Black hook shaved. Well, doink. A freshly shaved pirate. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife wants to get back together with me. Isn't that great, guys? Guys? <laughs> you, why are you menacing towards me? No, no, no! I can't go back to the beard life. I just started to get my, my life back together. Yeah, I thought my rage issues were cured. <laughs> you touch the black hook's chin and bestow the beard touch upon him. Uh-oh. Sorry. Grow! Grow! Only medical treatment for this is going to be, like, mandatory total body shaves. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Nair. <laughs> we have to go to <laughs> Nair 12. Put on these goggles and jump into the pit of the Nair swim, swimming tank. Mm -hmm. The beard touch turns liars into truth tellers. 
The black hook goes red and begins to sweat nervously. That was weird. Uh, can you hear me? You, yeah. Can, uh, yeah. Okay. Were you talking? Yeah, I just got disconnected. Oh, okay. Uh, you grill the black hook with a series of, uh, series of questions, series of revealing questions. Like, why are you late? Yeah. Maybe someone who uses the product can comment, but doesn't Nair burn? I think so. Like, yeah. really bad? <laughs> If what you is leave the it on name too of the long. band you came to see? He asks. The Beardy Brothers and the Black Hook. You say. Oh, that's what you think I the name is. I forgot something. Oh, your name isn't he on forgot... the fucking poster. He forgot to show up. Yeah, he did pick a show. Now we get to argue. No, it should be uh, the Beard Boys with everyone he named says, individually. We're right. not a fucking Doobie Brothers cover band. Yeah. Asshole. All right, let's get the moral of move out here. Dead, dead body. I'm not doing China Grove story? again. <laughs> oh. If someone dresses nicely, drives a tour bus, and has a clean chin. They are probably rich and powerful. Oh, that's a good sequel bait. You finish up the last bits of your story and take a breather. Now we got a deal with Black Hook's uh, now rich that's uncle. that's meta. Yeah. That's so meta. Yeah, that is pretty meta. <sighs> okay, yeah, I'm taking a breather. <sighs> <sighs> wow. Yeah. Wait, which story's up next? It's the last story of the night. So <laughs> Uh, the last story of the night is provided by Not Your Beautiful Wife. Uh, so thank you, whoever you are. I think I might be sure, but I can't tell for sure. Hmm. We'll have to analyze the story. Yeah. Right. You are David Byrne, a psycho killer. You find yourself reading story two. Oh, I should have done this for story two. Uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, hindsight's, hindsight's always totally funny. You change it to three. Just change it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's the story two theme song. I'll keep it, I'll keep it, I'll keep oh, it. Oh, yeah. You might find yourself reading story two. Okay. You ask yourself how you got here. Jim Christ appears and explains everything. Of course. I'm sorry about the first story, he says. It was just so fucked up. That's on point. That's on brand. <laughs> <laughs> the Kool-Aid Man story. Yeah, that was pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah. You say the Kool-Aid Man one? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's tie it all together. And this but last... now I know who Lizzo is, and I'm in love. Yeah. Pretty great. It's a lot to love. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known who Lizzo was, yeah. <laughs> That's the lesson. He'll learn. Yeah. But now I've met Lizzo and I love her. Ah. Yeah. Could that be my beautiful wife? Oh, yeah. Jim asks. Oh, yeah? Well, that's great. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. <sighs> I like to think Jim Christ is asking this like while he's making a sandwich. Oh, yeah, tell me more. Mm -hmm. He's putting mayonnaise on some bread. Mm -hmm. Having a mayonnaise sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just mayonnaise. White bread, mayonnaise, white bread, delicious. <laughs> and we go, uh... Who's the real psycho here right now? Mm -hmm. He's like a Kramer character. Mm -hmm. He just walks in. Uh, oh, I'm I'm just gonna next it. That, well, that's great. Tell me more. Yeah, let's just see if it generates anything. 
Tough one. You look around. Okay, and? Thanks, Em. Look around, look around. Oh. A lady screams. You turn around what? and are greeted by a wall of fire. Which engulfs you. Oh my god. You die. You fuck face. Hey, uh, you hey, yeah. set me up for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, that was that was her getting upset with us going. Let's just next it. Yeah. Oh, you're not uh, gonna give us anything. We'll just next it again. Uh, oh, you're fucking dead. I'm <laughs> sorry. I made you try to do work, Emily, but you know you didn't give us shit in those first couple of answers. Uh, okay, undo it. Undo it. I'll come up with something. Oh, we. I mean, we could always come back as a ghost or something. Okay, I'm gonna say Jim Christ revives you. Okay, or that. Yeah, that works. That works. Where is the wall of fire? Yeah, apparently localized entirely on our body because it just instantly killed us. Takes out a small drink skin and pours some kombucha into our mouths. Uh, <gasps> yes, there you go. <laughs> some special brand Jimbucha. This stuff will make you alive again. The second story was better. Ha, huh? he says. <laughs> Jim Christ says wow. LOL. That's very meta. Oh, the AI does not know. Jim Christ says LOL. Take a bite of my sandwich. You ask him about his suicide, but he just says later. You keep saying later. I don't think you're ever going to tell us. It didn't hold. Uh, later, later. I'm going to say Jim Christ pockets some of your silverware. Okay. And motions for you to... um. Um, go with him out the door, out the front door. Okay, yeah. There's got to be a reason he showed up at their place tonight. So. Jim Christ, do you, it, do you need something? Was it more than just pawning our silverware? <laughs> yeah. You meet a sheriff's deputy on the way out and hand him a load of Jim's stolen goods. Ah, uh, it was a sting operation. The officer smiles and smiles and smiles and doesn't take any. <laughs> what? Thanks, he oh, says. Smiling. I guess the officer's fucking in on it, too. He smiles and smiles and smiles and doesn't take any. Right. Hmm. You imitate the officer. And smile, and smile, and smile back at him. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, not so fun when it's being done at you, huh? So stop as it. You plot, as you plot his murder, or we are a psycho killer. Yeah, there oh, you go. Oh, yeah. He's the sheriff ba, 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 and the deputy. Ba, 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 ba. We're also probably a sociopath, so we just see him yeah. smiling, and we're like, that's how people act. Why the fuck are you smiling for? Oh! Jim asks. Harsh words. You want to kill that guy? Oh, Jim's a devil on our nice shoulder. Day, you say. Jim would recognize yeah, that smile anywhere. Is. He smiles back. Yep. <laughs> um, inspired by Jim Christ. <laughs> It's a nice day is the best deflection. No, I don't want to murder anyone. It's you, just so beautiful outside. You take your uh, silver butter knife and <laughs> I'm going to say you take your spoon. Nah, silver butter knife. <laughs> and plunge it into the sheriff's neck. Oh. We're thinking smart. It's no point in killing Jim. He'll just be back in three days. Mm -hmm. Then you pocket the knife. You drive Jim to his favorite diner and buy him breakfast. 
He ate it all and then some, but he's happy. Yes. And then some. Did he eat some of our breakfast? <laughs> yeah, he ate some of our breakfast. He ate all the jellies on the table that was supposed to be for everybody. He drank the maple syrup. He ate all the stevia packets and the creamers. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Jim Christ flirts with the waitress. Okay. Hey, hot tits! You ever seen anyone eat all this much jam on one piece of toast before? <laughs> <laughs> Now, well, now you have. Should I do the? Should I do da 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 thing? Does uh, that work? I do colon. It never usually. seems to work. Okay, it never seems to work for me. I'll try it. Jim Christ flirts with the waitress by saying colon. I'll irrigate yours. Could I have some coffee with that? <laughs> okay. Sure Subtle. thing. She be back. <laughs> You pay oh, the bill works. and step outside. You see Jim Christ. We're, we're probably like looking at her ass when we said that. Can I have some coffee with that? Yeah, yeah. You see Jim Christ railing the waitress <laughs> by the dumpster <laughs> <laughs> while she smokes a cigarette. Oh, yeah. That's my cigarette break. <laughs> You tell Jim. You better hurry up. I got to sing happy birthday in there. <laughs> you tell Jim to hurry up. I need to make the 24 hour deadline for my first story. Oh, you remind him. Oh, he leaves and you get into your car. We're a writer. Your stomach grumbles. Oh my God. Just left the restaurant. He just, <laughs> Jim, why did you eat our breakfast? <laughs> Jim just goes, oh, I'm stuffed. Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> Maybe we're so nervous about this uh, deadline that we uh, just didn't, weren't hungry. Oh, annotation. A life-size elephant statue made from used, still sticky bubble gum. Why do you even have this? That's a great question. Uh, you pull out uh, a life-size elephant statue made from used sticky bubble gum, and uh, I, it. I imagine we're in like a like a big '70s Cadillac, like a land yacht. Yeah, it is your trinket, or it is your uh, what? Uh, what? What am I trying Life to say? Sized? Yeah. Oh, this like yeah. A, this is like a big Lebowski kind of story. It is your idol for breaking writer's block. Oh. Inspire me. And it has worked every time. What is it? It's an elephant made out of bubble gum? A life size elephant statue made from used sticky bubble gum. Still sticky. It's like, uh, it's like one of those. It's like a Hindu trinket, right? Well, it's life size, so yeah. Oh, like a baby elephant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you are immediately inspired to write a story about, and then let's see. A crazy elephant who dreams of becoming a doctor and then having his heart stolen by a greedy king who sends him to the glue factory. You decide to call it gum surgery. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. That I, Wow. You have ten million dollars. Go make a movie, David Byrne. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> that does. <laughs> you get the green light. Yeah. Universal all <laughs> story four, yeah. Wow, yeah, A24, I... pick this up. Yeah, wow, <laughs> please, A24. Yeah, this is right up A24's alley. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> David Lynch agrees to direct. Oh, that, that's the dream. This summer in gum surgery. <laughs> 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 You start your first day of filming when you're leading actor. Oh, here we go. Who, who's going to be the crazy elephant? Whoa! Jim Malkovich walks up to your car. He can play that. Hey yeah. there, killer, he says. John Malkovich! How do you know I murder people? <laughs> yeah. 
We're oh, directing yeah. from our car. <laughs> Maybe this is just like a Hollywood thing. Like everyone knows we've killed, but yeah, it's the business. We, oh, yeah. you, you've got a you got a movie going, so nobody's gonna say anything until after you the film at least. Some throats to make it. It's Hollywood. just a nickname. Yeah, it's like going up to OJ and going, "Hey, what's up, Kelly?" <laughs> he loves that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. You direct you. Wait, what am I trying to say here? Do we want to go through production, or do we want to jump right to the movie being done? It f- film our first sex scene. <laughs> yeah. You film. You are ready to direct the first sex scene of the film. You give John... We gotta get this part right. God damn it. You give John Malkovich the following advice. He's playing the alpha? Yes. (laughs) You walk into the room in just your underwear. I'll be waiting in the bed. John Malkovich nods and walks off. All right, this is very inappropriate. We're just filming a porno right now. All right, we're going to do the sex scene. Uh, The sex scene's with me, the director. Uh, I'm just playing myself, so take your underwear off, and I'll be waiting in bed. I'm going to say you you scream, let's make art. (laughs) Okay, yeah, that's... We shout that after at the start of everything. All right, let's let's make our <laughs> action. Uh, David, why are there no camera crew at this scene? Oh, that's don't worry, hidden we'll camera. That gets the the it always gets the best performance when you can't see the camera. All right, but I don't see any it's crew. This, uh, this and, is GoPro on my head. Yeah, and it is four a.m. The production team sets up a blue screen for the oh, okay. leading lady to be sucked into. What? The leading what? lady, a beautiful 26-year-old British actress who goes by the name of the Countess, walks up to you. Oh. A little pretentious. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Get sucked into a blue screen. <laughs> to get sucked into? Yeah, I don't know what that means. The movie still do blue screen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, John's like, okay, I've done this whole movie, and uh, why is the character an elephant again? <laughs> it's the script, John! <laughs> Don't ask me such stupid questions! 26, is she a grandma? Could be. The Countess. <laughs> so your first name is the... Yeah. <laughs> you start the scene and yell, Line! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Suck and fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Suck and fuck. No, no, no. Those are stage directions. There's no <laughs> lines at the scene. Repeatedly as the actress speaks in a monotone voice. <laughs> this is not working, so you try something else. You lay down on the blue screen and tell her to look at your dick. Oh, all right. This is <laughs> okay. all part of your performance. Don't worry. There's a production team here. I'm not being inappropriate. It's just part of the movie. Look at my dick. <laughs> Blue or green screen that you just depend on the color goes the, the stuff in the screen. Yeah, okay, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. For some reason I thought blue screen was like older, more outdated, and we use more green screen now. Mm-hmm. No, idea. blue screen is better. I think green is less uh common in like people like Nobody's got green hair. Yeah, I guess you got green eyes. I don't know. Uh, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. I remember. Yeah, but sometimes you. But it's less natural when you get like reflection, like green reflection off people's skin. Yeah. That's why they use blue. They use blue screen for weather forecasts. Yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> okay. Uh... She stares at your dick. Yeah, and then that we gotta we gotta go to the premiere. We gotta flash forward a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Cher. That's the perfect. <laughs> As the days go by. The crew looks on. Can you make his dick bigger? <laughs> she asks in a meek voice. 
We can't get his dick bigger, the director says in a panic. The director, aka us. Movie's yeah. ruined. No. No amount of uh, CGI is gonna make this look any bigger. So just get to, get to staring. I'm just gonna say three weeks later at the premiere. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. The script clearly states that the main actor has a 14 inch dick. Yeah. Are you sure? No one's gonna believe that's that. What, mm -hmm. That's what the blue screen's for. Yeah. We can't get I'm it. I'm gonna say three months later. Okay. You attend the premiere. Okay. Yeah. Damn it, David Lynch. Yeah. David, you don't have to humiliate us in front of the whole cast. Truth. With your leading lady and 300 other people. <laughs> when the oh. movie begins, you already know it's going straight to VHS. <laughs> Oh the movie God. continues as a series of events involving the leading lady and your <laughs> dick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, buckle in. This movie's going straight to VHS after tonight. <laughs> they don't even fucking make VHS tapes anymore. We're going to have to... <laughs> to release the family video. <laughs> the year 2025. Uh, your VHS tape becomes a cult classic. And but you uh fall into obscurity. Oh, it's like that movie with Tony Wiseau, or what, Tommy Wiseau? Mm hmm The Room? Until one day... And then... Which room? <laughs> yeah, which room? A record company signs you to a record deal. Ooh. One oh. year later, you release your album Chapel of Cheating. The first single is called that. Down in the Chapel of Cheating. Wow! The, that... sec the second single is called Still in the Chapel of Cheating. <laughs> yeah. That is a catchy title, though. The Chapel of Cheating, yeah. Down in the Chapel of Cheating. Uh, if anybody had produces music, feel free to take that one and please make us a song. Yeah. I guess the elephant was supposed to be his dick. <laughs> yeah, maybe... <laughs> <sighs> Uh, it was such a good punk. pitch. Yeah, it was such a good pitch, but we just made it all about our dick. That's that's a damn shame. <laughs> all right, let's get this moral. I thought I thought that was pretty interesting. What do you think, Jim? About what? About what? That was. That oh, I, <laughs> I see. I, I was. Hey, I can you tell us what you <laughs> <you're laughs> the story? <laughs> Good setup, for those. Yeah. Moral. <laughs> Couldn't afford a real elephant. Went for the next batch to see. Yeah, bubblegum. Never betray wow. an artist. Ooh, vague and mysterious. Yeah. I mean, that didn't. Did, we, did that happen? We scrawled that on the Countess's mirror, or Countess's mirror in like lipstick. Never betray an artist. Did you just waste my damn lipstick on the mirror? Yeah, sorry. And we didn't kill anyone. Yeah. Kind of happy. Yeah. About that. Found a good outlet yeah. for our rage. Yeah. We quelled yeah. our rage with Hollywood and uh, the film business. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching, everybody. If you're new here, we do this every night at 8 p.m. Eastern. We do a trilogy of AI dungeon stories with prompts from users like you. You can fill out a... Uh, if you want to submit a prompt for a future episode, you can go to that Google link uh, and submit a prompt. Uh, we got Haiku Wednesday coming up here. Uh, and yeah. yeah. Uh, fill it out. And we'll do it in a future episode. Yeah. Uh, if you <laughs> like us, follow us, tell your friends, and tell your step Kool Aid men, your step psycho killers. 
step Lizzo's. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your step Beardy Boys and uh. Oh yeah, Dread Halen. Dread Halen. Yeah, Dreddy, Dreddy Van Halen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see you tomorrow at eight. Bye, ho wee way. Bye, ho wee way, everyone. See you, wee way. Do haikus need you are? No, but they do need to be haikus. Sure, why? Why not? <laughs> so. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>